I had to go ahead and warm up me some oxtails for lunch after having them last night. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. They taste even better today than they did yesterday. Get some of that juice on there. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not really um, picky about certain things, but I am picky about my Worcestershire sauce. Um, I love using this Leah and Perrins. That's what I always use whenever I use, um, when I'm making the oxtails. Also onion, garlic, carrots, beef broth, um, he also wants some couscous, so I'm going to make some couscous with it and some cabbage and um, beef bouillon. I use Tony's for everything. Everything I cook with, I usually use Tony's. Um, smoked paprika, chili powder, um, ground cumin, garlic, onion, cayenne pepper, and turmeric and liquid smoke. So, although I do have uh, some cutting boards, uh, I'm just... <laughs> old school. I like to use a plate. So I'm just going to use this. I'm not a professional cook, so you may say I'm not cutting this right, but you know, it's fine. You just cut the onions. They don't have to be pretty. They don't have to be perfect. I just cut them for flavor. And I do use one whole onion. burning my eyes. I like to cook my onions, saute my onions and garlic in coconut oil. Um, if you don't know about coconut oil, I will give you uh, a little gem. If you are grown, grown, if you are grown, grown, you should have this not only in the kitchen, but also in the bedroom. <laughs> It does wonders in the bedroom, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. So I'll just put like, um, I'll say a tablespoon full of coconut oil. Now you do know coconut oil burns a little uh, faster than regular oil, so I'll turn it down kinda low. Um, and just let it start to melt inside of the pot. And as it's melting, I add my onions. That one whole young onion, a sweet onion, purple onion. I usually use a sweet onion. And um, then I add my garlic. Just take a garlic clove and just put big chunks in there. Um, oh, if you wanna see how I cut it, I usually just cut the bottom off of it. Put a slit in it, peel it. I'm an unorthodox cook. I don't uh, follow no recipe with most of the things that I cook. I just go by taste, even when it comes to the seasoning. So I can't really tell you how much of something to use. Um, I just do it just by taste, so. But anyway, um, I'm gonna put one more clove of garlic in there. Uh, they're gonna be good anyway. You know what I'm saying? They're still gonna be good. So. I get that to going, turn it up a little bit. So I have the onions and garlic in there. And I add, um, I get beef bouillon, beef bouillon cubes. And um, I usually add about two, sometimes three, just depending on how much you make. And we all, I always cook like we have a house full of people. I mean, I, I just don't, I never have really gotten used to cooking um, for just the two of us. And so I always cook way too much. But one thing about my husband is he has a vacuum pack and he will vacuum pack something in a minute. And it's convenient because whenever we have a taste for something, we don't have to wait for me to cook it when it comes to certain things, especially like if I make a lasagna we'll vacuum pack it and put it in there and then that way we don't even have to worry about um, about the lasagna. So I'm gonna turn this up so that the onions and um, garlic can start to cook and after it starts to cook a little bit, I'll add the carrots. Okay, and once you start um, getting the sizzle, I guess you can hear that. 
it's his oil in it. And like I said, that um, the coconut oil will cook down fast. So I turn it down a little bit. Add a little chicken broth. I mean, not chicken broth. <laughs> Add a little beef broth. And that brief broth is going to cool it down some. I'm going to turn it back up. Because I'm trying to get the beef bouillon to melt down some. So I washed my carrots off. Mm, it smells so good already. And I added a uh, beef broth. Um, really, I end up using more um, beef broth right now. I'm just using it to keep everything from uh, sticking and just blending it together. And you know, I told y'all I don't use no recipe, so <laughs> I'm hoping y'all following me okay on this. And I just put some little bit of a uh, smoke, liquid smoke in there to give it that smoke taste. Oh, that smells so good. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now, when it comes to Leah Perns, I really like the way this tastes. When I start off putting it in there, um, um, I would say maybe about um, a half of a cup or a cup. Um, really, like I said, I go by taste, so I just kind of mix everything together, and um, the smell of it, you know, about the smell of it um, also. So I'll let that cook a little bit. Just until the onions become like a translucent color. You don't want it to be burnt, just like a translucent color, because you want to keep as much flavor in there as you can. So then I gradually start adding my oxtails that I have already rinsed off. I just put them inside. a lot of oxtails. <laughs> we'll be eating on these for a couple days. Wash my hands off. And um, I just try to get the flavor to mix in with the oxtails. just keep them, uh, you know, it's not really a lot of juice in there right now, but I'm just like letting the flavor of the onions and garlic and kind of soak into the, uh, the meat a little bit before I put too much juice, add too much juice to it. And then when I start seasoning it, like I said, I don't have a particular recipe, so I just kind of Like we coat it. If you don't have anything else, you definitely want to make sure that you have some type of Creole if you want it kind of hot. I like mine to be uh, spicy and sweet. With garlic, put some onion powder. I'm sorry I don't have a recipe, y'all, but I really don't. <laughs> Chili powder. how spicy you want it. You don't want to use too much cayenne pepper. But I like mine to be a little spicy. So I'll say, hmm. I'm going to just kind of stir that up. Ooh, this smells so good already. Ooh. Just kind of stir it up a little bit. Now, what I usually do, I start it off in a pot because it's easier for me to season it and um, 
move the spoon around, get all of the um, seasons and everything on it. So I start off in a pot because if you start off in a crock pot, the seasoning is gonna be more at the top and I like for the seasoning to go all the way through. And I didn't have any curry, so I'm gonna use a little turmeric. And I just let that cook down. Mm, you can smell that, can't you? Can't you? Can you smell that? Ooh, you can smell them seasonings in there, can't you? <laughs> and I'm the type of person where I feel like you can't use too much Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, however you want to um, pronounce it, however it's pronounced. But you can't uh, use too much of that. So, I usually go by the smell. Like I said, I don't follow recipes, so I usually just go by the smell of it. I let them cook enough to where I can taste it, but I don't recommend tasting it while they're raw. These are some nice size oxtails. Really good looking oxtail. But I just try to cook it down to get the flavorings in it, and then I'm gonna put it into the crock pot to finish cooking. Okay, so then I add the peppers. I'll just cut these up, you know, it's just, it's just for flavor, so they don't have to be pretty, they don't have to be perfect. Um, I just use these bad peppers right here, put some red ones, orange ones, and yellow ones in there. I'm not a professional cook, so, you know, I'm just showing you how I cook them at home. <laughs> so, put those peppers in there. These are um, sweet peppers. Like I say, I like to have, um, you sure rinse your peppers off first? Rinse them off first. Um, I like to have uh, just a mixture of peppers as it's cooking to add some flavor. And as you see, I don't have a lot of juice in there because I'm gonna transfer it over into the crock pot and I don't want it to splatter everywhere. So if it needs more juice, I'll put the juice in there after I add it to the crock pot. Just have those peppers cooking down. It's about time to add it. I'm gonna let the peppers cook a little bit to get some of that flavoring in there. And then I'm gonna put it in the crock pot. Just kind of put it down low. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, it's hot, so be careful. Make sure you get all of that in there. Peppers, ooh, yes, yeah. garlic. Oh, see how good that looks? Now I'm gonna add, um, it, it already naturally has fat in the um, oxtails, but these oxtails were really meaty. Usually um, I let them cook down and then I trim the fat off, but it wasn't a lot of fat on these, so I'm gonna save the fat in there to help it to cook. I don't really have a specific time on the cooking. I just let it cook until I can take a spoon and the meat falls off the bone. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on for about four hours and then I'm gonna check it. Okay, it was one more thing that I needed to add that I wait and add after I put it into the crock pot. I don't usually um, add this in the beginning, but I add brown sugar. And like I said, I don't have a recipe, so I'm sorry I can't tell y'all exactly how much brown sugar to add, but um, I'll say maybe about uh, a fourth of a cup, because you don't want it to be too sweet. So I'll say about a fourth of a cup. But I just kind of stir that around a little bit. Just so it can have like a little glaze. 
um, not really sweet, but just kind of like a sweet glaze on top of the oxtails. Just a little hint of sweetness. So I use brown sugar instead of regular sugar. And you see, I didn't use a lot. Just a little, a little bit of sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of beef broth because I always um, season them kind of thick to make sure there's enough seasoning in it. And you can always go back and add beef broth or water um, to the seasoning, but it's hard to, if you under season it, to um, add seasoning once you put it into the crock pot. So I usually kind of over season it a little bit and then just add water or add um, beef broth if necessary, but you know, that's just how I do it too. But anyway, they're cooking really good. So, see what they're doing, how they're coming along. Um, oh, yes. Oh my God. Oh, I wish y'all could just smell them. They smell so delicious. Oh, see, that meat is starting to come a little bit. It's still not quite right for me, like I said, although it's starting to be tender. I like to be able to take a spoon. Let me see what that tastes like. Oh my God. Mm, 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 mm. Still not quite tender enough. I love coming some good oxtail. Good, good. Okay, so we'll come back and check them in just a little bit and see if the meat is falling off the bone. Okay, now this might be a little extra, but this is something that I usually do. Um, there's a layer of grease that sits on top of the oxtails. If you look, I don't know if you can see in there, but grease, you see that, that layer of uh, grease? So what I usually do, and it's, it's extra, you don't have to do this, but to me, it's like when you first get ready to eat it, if it's all that grease is on the top, then that's what you're gonna taste. You're gonna taste the grease. So I take the time out <laughs> to try and get as much of that grease off of the top as I can. You tell the difference of the grease. And let me show y'all something. Look at all that grease. All that grease that I got off the top of it. Now, mind you, there are a few of the, the seasonings in there, but most of it is grease. So I do take the time out and uh, take that grease off. Now, that don't mean you have to do it. So I will give it maybe another 30 minutes. I think I'm gonna just let it cook for the full four hours that it was cooking. Okay, y'all, that's what I'm talking about. See how, that, see how that meat just fall off of there? See how that meat just fall off of there? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Just look how that meat just comes off of there like that so easy. That's how you want it to come off of there. But uh, it's kind of late, so I'm not gonna cook any cabbage now. Oh, look at that, it just fall. <laughs> Ooh. I'm not gonna cook any cabbage, but I am gonna cook this couscous real quick. Um, no need to really just show it. It's, uh, but it's quick and easy it's quick and easy it only takes like five minutes five minutes to make so that's the reason why i use the instant couscous if you hadn't haven't tried it before try it it's really good it's really good they have different flavors um curry is my favorite but they didn't have the curry kind but yeah so i'm gonna cook this and um i'll let you see what it looks like after it's done so this is couscous. If you haven't seen couscous before and don't know what couscous is, it's like a grain. So I usually like to just set it in the middle. They're so big that, you know, you just put a little bit of 
vegetables around it. A lot of chunks of meat have fallen off of the oxtails into the pot. Ugh, 